Hi, this is Dr. Don, and we are talking today about why people change and why others do not. You know, I train therapists for a living, and many of my students come in and they will say, why is it that some people are willing to make important shifts in their lives and other people just go on doing the same thing over and over again? One of the things I've discovered after 40 years of doing therapy is the vast majority of people, unfortunately, are not going to do their work. The vast majority of people are going to keep doing what they've always done and they're not going to make those important shifts that they need to make. So that brings up a critical question, which is, why do some people make important changes and other people do not? And this was something that I spent a couple of years reflecting back on my work and started to come to some conclusions about, and I'd like to share those a little bit with you here today. When I was in school, I had a professor say something that I found to be incredibly profound, and that was, a man can become anything he wants to become if he's willing to give up what he now is. What he was saying was, he was saying that life is about embracing important changes. And the majority of people are not going to embrace that change process because it's fearful and because they're not sure what's ahead of them. I was doing a session a number of years ago with a woman and she came in and we had a first session together and she was sharing her story with me. And it was pretty depressing, it was pretty difficult, and it was pretty hard. And when she got through, she looked at me as if to say, okay, well, what are you going to do with that? So I looked at her and I described a treatment protocol. I said, well, we would address it doing this and this, and you would be doing some of these sorts of things, and we would work together, and it would take us about this long a period of time to do that. And when I got through, she looked at me and she folded her arms and she said and smiled, she said, yeah, no, I'm not going to do any of that. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, no, that's not going to happen at all. And I said, you know, I said, most people that meet with me wait until they leave and then they never schedule an appointment again and I never hear from them. Very few people have the guts to look at me and say, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to do this. And I could said, can you tell me why? And she said, sure, I'll tell you. She said, Dr. Don, she said, you've heard my life story. She said, I live in a swamp. She said, my life is filled with alligators in a swamp. And she said, it is miserable. But I know where all of those alligators are that bite me. And she said, I'd rather keep the swamp that I've got than risk a swamp that I might know nothing about. And with that, she got up and she left and I never heard from her again. My sad commentary on that story is the vast majority of people would rather keep the swamp that they're in than take the bridge over to a new life. And so this is about helping people move across that bridge and giving up the fallacy that they're just moving from one swamp filled with alligators to another one filled with crocodiles. So why do some change and others do not? Number one, we have discovered the power of the will. When people make up their mind that they are going to do a shift and they're going to do something different, people are powerful. They're pretty unbelievable. I worked with a young man not too many years ago whose background was dealing in drugs. He'd been in federal penitentiary. He had been part of a, of a white supremacist group. Uh, his record was this long. And he was coming out of jail literally living in a week-by-week -week motel, couldn't find work, and getting around town on a bicycle. But he decided, he made a decision, he willed that he was going to change his life and do something different. And I was talking to them the other day, about two years later, and he has got an apartment, he's got a job, he's being promoted, he has stayed off drugs, he has got a life put together. And I looked at him and I said, why were you able to make all these shifts? And he smiled and he said, the first piece was me deciding that my life was going to be different. So what I'm saying to you is, if you're watching this and you're wondering, where do I begin in the change process? It begins with the will. It begins with that internal decider that says, I am making up my mind. And what I have found is, when people make up their mind to do something different, it can be incredibly powerful. 
Number two, people decide to make important changes because an internal time clock goes off. If you've been watching this series of videos that I've done, you've periodically heard me talk about that internal time clock of dissatisfaction. People build up over time to a point of dissatisfaction that the alarm goes off and they have that Popeye moment where they say, I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more. And so we understand that it's a good thing sometimes when that internal time clock of dissatisfaction goes off and we say, I can't be this way, I can't do this anymore, something's going to have to shift and change. And so a second piece of the change process is that moment of realization where I go, I am going to move a different direction with this thing. And that is a very, very powerful thing to experience. A third reason people may decide to make important shifts in their life is because it may be that the pain has built up enough that they can't take it anymore and they're forced to make a shift and make a change. I've been a marathon runner for most of my life and loved running long distance. About five years ago I was running down the outside fence at Love Field here in Dallas and I had at that point in time what I thought were two pulled hamstrings fire off down both of my legs simultaneously. I stopped running, I grabbed both my legs, I was in intense pain, I laid down on the ground for a minute. It was just awful. Hobbled back to my house, next day I get up, can't, can barely walk, take time off from running, and every time I'm going back out, I'm having the same problem. Eventually I'm getting more stooped, eventually I can't stand up comfortably, eventually I'm not walking real well, I can't walk upstairs. I finally ended up in my doctor's office, my general practitioner's office, and I said, I have these two pulled hamstrings and they're just driving me crazy and they're causing me all kinds of other problems. And he poked and prodded around for a minute or two and he kind of laughed and he said, you don't have pulled hamstrings, you idiot. He said, you've hurt your back. He said, you've probably got a lower lumbar problem. I'm going to send you to a neurosurgeon. So what had happened was, though, it took me about six months of that pain building up to me ever call the doctor and him correctly diagnosing, you idiot, it's not your hamstrings, it's your back. Well, our point there being, for some of us, we don't move to a point of change until we are in intense pain and that pain forces us to do something different. Now let me tell you the gamble with doing that. The gamble with doing that is on the one hand you have pain and that pain is building up. That pain can be in your job. I'm in a job situation that's driving me crazy. That pain can be in my marriage. We've just got problems that are building up under the rug. That the pain can be with a child. The pain can be with my extended family. There's all kinds of pain that we're undergoing. And that pain is building up so long as we will not deal with that situation. The thing we've got to gauge is, over here against the pain, is our resources. The resources that we can bring to bear to solve the problem, to get rid of that pain. And we generally have three resources. We have time, we have money, and we have energy. Time, money, and energy that goes into solving our problems and reducing the pain. The problem is this. The longer I let this problem and this pain build up, the higher it goes, what direction are my resources going? Well, they're going down, which means there's going to be a point in time where the pain is going to take over and I am not going to have the resources to deal with it anymore. So one of the things I will say to my clients oftentimes is, you want to address the problems, you want to address the pain before the resources run out and you don't have the capacity to deal with it. I do a lot of consulting with organizations, and you all know organizations and schools and churches and nonprofits do crazy stuff. 
And one of the things I have to say to him is, you've got to stop doing the crazy stuff over here before you use up all the positive resources of people that you have here and the organization goes into decline or eventually dies. So we want to address, we want to address the pain with resources before things get too bad. Another reason people will address and make some significant changes is very different from the others that I've talked about. And that is the presence of an important and a loving relationship that comes into their life. Sometimes an individual who has been alone or lonely or isolated or defeated in a lot of ways will be partnered with an individual that is very loving and kind and important and meaningful to them. And the safety and security of that individual allows them to address some very important wounds that they possess. Let me be very gentle with you at this point in time. There are a lot of people out there in the general population that carry what I call a core wound. Uh, they've been wounded in some ways in the past that are very profound, uh, are very dramatic, and have been uh, very, very harmful and painful to them. And they protect that woundedness with defense and, and, and not going to let anybody get near that. But sometimes a loving, caring partner, a loving, caring friend, uh, can be even a professional, a therapist, can create a relationship with them that makes it safe for them to then go through a change process. If you're an individual that is partnered with someone who carries a wound, it may be your relationship with them, your capacity to be a friend, to be a guide, to be a co-struggler with them, will give the courage to them that they need to embrace the change process to move to a life that is more meaningful. The thing I like to say to folks when we talk about making important changes is, reflecting back on the lady that I talked about a moment ago is, you don't have to live in that swamp. You don't have to be terrorized by those alligators that have been biting you for the last few years. And there are ways to move ahead into a change process that can lead to a new and satisfying life.